Now we take to the skies for the latest stage of an epic autumn migration. Emily Knight presents Flight of the Ospreys. Britain's ospreys are staging a remarkable comeback. Persecution drove them to the verge of extinction, but today there are over 300 breeding pairs of these enormous birds of prey, stretching from their stronghold in the Scottish Highlands right down to the south coast of England, where Paul Morton has helped bring them back to Pool Harbour. We started our reintroduction in 2017 in an attempt to try and re-establish a south coast breeding population. And this year, for the first time in, what, 200 years, we've now had nesting ospreys here in the local vicinity of the harbour, which is just incredible. For Paul, the osprey is a powerful symbol of hope, proof that we can bring back the wildlife we've wiped out from Britain and beyond. So our osprey reintroduction is actually just one piece of the jigsaw. You know, on the Isle of Wight, you've got the white-tailed sea eagle reintroduction. You've got cranes being reintroduced up on the Somerset levels, white storks at the Nepp estate. Beavers are going to be reintroduced in Pool Harbour soon. There are huge rewilding projects taking place around the country. And all of this is to replenish what man got rid of in the first place. Paul's ospreys and the rest of Britain's thriving population are now carrying that message of hope on the Great Migration to their winter hunting grounds in West Africa. Many, though, won't make it back alive for the British summer. A team of conservationists is travelling alongside the birds to find out why. The flight of the Osprey team is led by the biologist, adventurer and founder of the charity Conservation Without Borders, Sasha Dench. With climate change, there's obviously increasing variability in weather conditions. A lot of the wetlands that they use are being challenged by over-extraction or extra-extraction of water. The growth of the Sahara Desert is one of the major challenges for the birds. They've got a big stretch they have to fly. And then in various countries, there is shooting of birds. It's the 11th of August, and Sasha and her team are following the migrating ospreys across the channel, taking the ferry from Poole to France. They're driving south in a convoy of battered Land Rovers, down to the point where the River Loire meets the Atlantic Ocean. The journey from Cherbourg to the Loire Valley took us about four hours, but the welcome was incredible. We were welcomed by a group called Acrola, who are, manage a small ringing station on the estuary. So my name is Eugene Archer. I've been living here in France for 15 years. Eugene, how did you first hear about the flight of the Osprey expedition and what made you get in touch? I think I saw it on social media, probably on Twitter. And because I knew that you'd already done the flight with the swans, and when you spoke about this new project to follow Ospreys, I suddenly thought, well, one of the obvious stopover sites for Ospreys is here on the Loire estuary. As far as I know, we've never had any proof that Scottish birds are coming through here, but it seems logical that uh, birds that are migrating from the north to south are following a straight line are probably passing certainly very close. And you do get quite a number fishing and hunting along the river, don't you? We do, because this section of the river is very tidal. There's also a lot of mullet out here, which the ospreys seem to like a lot. And we regularly see them just when we're ringing here, we'll see birds sort of flying up and down the river at a distance. They come through here from about the middle of August through to maybe the last ones here at the end of September. Despite sharing the foreshore with an oil refinery, this carefully managed site on the north bank of the Loire estuary is an attractive refuelling spot for migrating birds of all kinds, including the critically endangered aquatic warbler, which joins the ospreys on the annual journey to West Africa. Local volunteers are busy trapping and ringing birds to help keep track of their numbers and their migration patterns. Certainly in springtime, there has always been maybe 10 centimetres of water here, and that's provided ideal breeding conditions for birds such as red shank and black wing stilt, amongst others. But summer 2022 hasn't been comfortable for migrating birds tracking along France's Atlantic coast. A series of heat waves peaked in the nearby city of Nantes at a record-breaking 42 degrees centigrade in mid-July. This year, although the birds arrived as normal in springtime and started nesting, the water disappeared very, very quickly, so they abandoned all nesting attempts here this year. Oh, well, yeah. We suspect that because it's so dry, there's no insect life here. 
So the birds that arrive expecting to be able to spend a few days here feeding up and fattening up before the next leg of their migration south, uh, there's nothing for them to eat. Standing here, there's a few obvious signs of stress on the area. Very dry grasses and just behind us there is you see an area of dry cracked mud that ought to be a wetland right now. In previous years this area has retained water throughout the summer just a little bit but enough to make it much more interesting for birds but this year for the last two months the whole area has been completely dry and as we've seen this morning you can put your hand down into the cracks it's that bad. Have you ever seen that before here? No I mean this year is particular I think uh, in a lot of places in Europe with the heat waves that we've been having and here we've been having heat waves since the end of May. And what are you what are you putting that down to? It's got to be climate change. Yes, the summers are nice and we have long periods when it's dry and sunny, blue skies. But we get, you know, maybe once a week we'll have a few hours of rain and we haven't had any rain here for weeks and weeks. Places like this are of huge importance for migratory species. And we're talking from birds the size of sedge warblers, which are going to be going to Africa, to waders, to ospreys. They all depend on this whole ecosystem the estuary, the reed beds, the plant communities, the insect communities, they're all interlinked. They all need kind of one another to survive. This year with the drought conditions, we've noticed that there are hardly any insects around here. We talking should be hassle, being hassled by... By mosquitoes, mosquitoes yes. And I, when we were sitting having dinner last night, uh, weren't we mosquitoes. weren't being bitten by mosquitoes. No. And normally that's not the case. If you're sitting having dinner at nine o'clock in the evening, normally you would wear long sleeve shirt and long trousers yeah. because otherwise you'd just get bitten. And it's but, nice not to be being annoyed, but actually here you think of mosquitoes as bird food rather than an irritation. Well, this is the thing. It's good for us as humans not to be bitten. On the other hand, from the bird's point of view, it's devastating because this whole area, even at the worst of times, would have had little pools of water here and there where there would have been uh, mosquito larvae, but they're, not uh, here. but they're not here. So the next stop was the Gironde estuary. It's the largest estuary in Western Europe. If you look at a map and you're imagining from an osprey's point of view, you're wanting to migrate down into Africa, this is the perfect stop en route. We were also there to look at solutions and um, and we were welcomed there by Raphael Mousseau. Oui, alors on est effectivement sur un site assez exceptionnel à l'échelle du territoire français. Euh, il faut imaginer que ici euh, jusqu'en 1999 We're on a site which is pretty unique in France. You have to imagine the scene here in 1999. This was an area growing cereal crops over almost 200 hectares. Every summer there was maize, sunflower or wheat. So this site, which is a polder reclaimed from the water of the estuary, is being restored, brought back to its natural state after a storm. In fact, there were two major storms during the winter of 1999 to 2000, which weakened and broke the dike, allowing the estuary water, which was very high at the time of the storm, to come onto the land. And according to the owner, it was very quickly clear that it would be difficult to repair the dike and restart crop growing. The owner proposed to the State Coastal Conservation Service that they buy this land, and the idea was to let nature re-establish itself in this area. And so today we've regained 200 hectares of wetland. As the waters of the estuary come up and down regularly, we also have fish which come to feed in this restored wetland. So it's a wonderful place to regularly see the osprey on migration. They come to feed on the fish typical of the estuary, uh, species such as mullet. We were allowed to fly a drone up over this area and shockingly, with the drone in the air at about 30 metres, the helicopter suddenly turns up flying really low and whilst one of my team said, oh, it looked like it was spraying something, my response was, oh, it can't possibly be spraying something you wouldn't spray on a protected area. And that evening when we went back to uh, and spoke to Raphael, he mentioned that, yes, actually, there is a programme of mosquito control for local tourism, which I was completely shocked by. I, I can't believe in this day and age you'd do that. And in the middle of the migration season, you're basically killing the food chain for 
the small birds which are migrating through the reed beds. It's also the, the food for fish that the osprey are eating. So it is one of the things that we will pick up and do our best to at least start conversations about. Sometimes it takes a, somebody to come in with fresh eyes and have a look at a system and go, actually, that bit, that doesn't make any sense. From the Gironde estuary, we headed south through the country, which has been badly hit by wildfires. So one of our vehicles came across still smouldering fires. They're mostly under control now with the help of, I think they say there was a thousand firefighters from across Europe came in to help. Biggest fires that they've seen here. And we've ended up at a site called the Marais Docks. It's a big ancient wetland site where ospreys, breeding ospreys were reintroduced. So uh, my name is Florent, so I am a kind of uh, ranger, a mix of ranger and wildlife biologist uh, at the nature reserve of the Maridors. Yeah, the, the, so the place is the, the huge wetland, it's uh, around um, 1,000 hectares. When the weather is, is clear, you can see the mountains and the ocean is uh, 5 kilometers just us. So this is a very nice place, yeah. Just as in Britain, the osprey was wiped out here in the early years of the 20th century. They returned to breed in central France in 1984, but the numbers remain low. Florent and his team are releasing Scottish chicks here to help found an osprey population along the French-Spanish border. But he's just caught something. He's got something. Whilst some of Sasha's Flight of the Osprey team count birds on the wetlands, the rest squeeze into a wooden tower, where 38 relocated chicks have been raised, fledged, and then launched themselves into the wide world. You can open the, the doors at the front from here, from this yes, side? Yes, yeah. yeah. The, the door is connected with a, uh, with a uh, line uh, here. Uh, okay. Florent and his colleague Paul yeah, try to keep human interaction with the chicks to a minimum. They feed the young birds with larger and larger chunks of fish until, just before they start their migration, their hunting instincts take control. You, young osprey are not supposed to be able to fish by themselves because uh, they are too young and they don't know how to do it. But uh, here we observe the, the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. The opposite. Yeah. yeah. We observe many youngs uh, able to uh, to fish by themselves yeah. with success oh. before to, to the migration. So yeah. it was really interesting because it means that they will be able yeah. to do yeah. it yeah. quickly. When you translocate the chicks here, there's no parents. No. They're just <laughs> orphans. They grow up. Yeah, exactly, right? I am the father. <laughs> and Paul is the mother. <laughs> oh. we, are, we are the kind of parents, yeah. so we have to put some food. Yeah. But they grow up very, very fast. It's, uh, it's incredible. When you observe them every day, it's, uh, it's totally crazy. Florence young ospreys have flown south already, and he doesn't expect many to return. He estimates he's seen just eight or nine of the 38 released chicks come back to France. When they disappear, you never know when, if they will come back, because uh, the, their journey south is uh, very critical, and uh, the mortality rate is very high for ospreys. It's, it's 75% for the two first years. So when you can see a bird come back here. It's a, a very big emotion. In the next episode of Flight of the Ospreys, Sasha and the team follow the birds as they face their biggest challenge so far. The ospreys have a choice to make. They can choose to pass the Pyrenees by going out to sea and across the water, and others head up straight into the mountains. Flight of the Ospreys was presented by Emily Knight and produced by Alistair Cross.